G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of my FIFA 22 Chelsea career mode and I just watched the game between Chelsea and Southampton at St. Mary's and that is the exact result I wanted to see after what has been a very disappointing week for the Chelsea Football Club. In this episode, we're going to be having two games. The first being, of course, up against Wolfsburg in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And then we will be playing the weekend fixture against Southampton. Before we get into the second leg of what will be a very important game, I'm sure. But the first job on hand is the first leg at home at Stamford Bridge. So, uh... Before I get into my thoughts on the uh, turbulent week that has been uh, happening in real life, um, let's get this uh, press conference for the quarterfinals out of the way. Alrighty, as we sit down for the Wolfsburg fixture, I am expecting a relatively simple and easy uh, game against these guys. Um, I'm not... Uh, Expecting really much of a challenge to be honest, but it is the Champions League so we cannot underestimate Anyone once we get to this stage. How do you think things stand now? We're sure we can win. That is the answer. I believe it is a uh, team from Germany that has um, Not built themselves the best of reputations. I would say in European football. They're a decent enough side, but you know nothing uh, too many, not too many positives, not too many negatives to say against them. I would, that's my opinion at least. Uh, will you change anything today? Um, the only plan we ever have is to win. I like that answer. That is uh, a philosophy that I definitely stand by. I always go into every single game expecting us to win and expecting a really, really good performance. So that is the answer I'm going to go with. Can you keep this great run going? Hmm... Let's not get distracted. I think that'll be best for morale. And I think it's important that even though we are versing a team that on paper has lesser quality players, ultimately it depends on your team performance. And if they put up a really good performance and make us struggle, then we might have a, uh, then we might have a fixture on our hands. Now, this is how the starting lineup looks from the last game that we played. And uh, we've got many tired bodies, that's for sure. So I'm going to have a quick fiddle around with the starting lineup and uh, this is what it's going to look like. And boom, that's what it's going to be for this first leg. Many great players up top, a solid defensive line and hopefully Kante and Kovacic can get the job done in midfield. Ah yes, the UEFA Champions League at home at Stamford Bridge. Is there ever a better night in football when you sit down in your seat Getting ready for the anthem, the atmosphere, the intense rivalry of whoever you're going up against. When the stakes are so high of knockout football, you love to see it. In saying that, when you do lose, it is heartbreaking. And that is exactly what happened midweek for us against Real Madrid. Let's talk about it, guys. It was definitely far from our best performance. And it's exactly, exactly what I did not want to see after the weekend result last week against Brentford. I said in last the last episode that I wanted to see a really solid defensive display and a bit of fight back, a bit of determination to show, uh, show the world that we are still the best, one of the best teams in European football. And we just absolutely did not show up. And uh, Real Madrid proved that, you know, when they play their best football, they are an absolutely lethal White outfit. Oh, good ball by Ziyech. Havertz is in here. Can I cut onto his left? I can. Oh, the shot goes straight down the keeper's throat. But yeah, honestly, it was really disappointing. I think Christensen in that centre-back position on the right-hand side, he got found out really quick, didn't he? Just constantly looked out of position. Just looked unsure of himself. Just, yeah, it was really... Um, Vinicius Jr. really proved um, that weak link that we have in that spot when he is playing there. Because I think Christensen, as a Chelsea player who's come through our youth academy and had many years on loan and or opportunity here for Ziyech, 
Oh, just blocked. Um, yeah, as someone who's been involved in this Chelsea squad for, uh, I think, about 10 or so years, he's always been on the cusp of greatness, I feel like. And now with the rumours of him going to Barcelona and you know going there permanently, I, I think that might be... Um, the best course of action for us as a club because I think Christensen has not cut it whenever he's um, put on the Chelsea blue shirt. He's had some good days at the office, but he's just never been able to reach his potential, I feel like. He's always just been, you know, good on his best days, never been outstanding. So it's disappointing. Oh, good save there by Mendy. It's disappointing, but... Him going to Barcelona, if it does end up happening, um, if the paperwork is all finalised, I think that'll be a good move for him and maybe a fresh start away from the Chelsea Football Club. Alrighty, time to defend this corner. I don't want to be conceding. That would be embarrassing. Oh, a wayward header from the Wolfsburg player. Now, I did say in the last episode when I was doing my Chelsea preview that I believe Karim Benzema is in career best form. And uh, he definitely proved that. Oh, what a shot. Benzema, I think he's probably up there as maybe... He's definitely top three strikers in the world. I don't know if he's the best. Lewandowski is obviously elite. Harry Kane's in such great form as well at the moment. But scoring a hat-trick in a Champions League quarterfinal, like not many players can do that. And, of course, the third goal was served up to him on a plate by Evendi. Um, just an absolute shocking mistake. But it's one of those things when a player is in the right place at the right time or is able to read the game so very well. And the fact that he scored that first header was just phenomenal as well. He is really one of the best strikers that we're witnessing in uh, European football at the moment. So credit to him. He's doing fantastic, but the bottom line is Chelsea did not do enough to close down the spaces around him and to make sure that he wasn't getting the opportunity to get those shots on goal. Well in, good block there. Good dribbling as well by Pulisic. Let's get that out wide. Oh no. Hudson Odoi isn't able to make the tackle there. Coming close to half time here, and we're still not head on the scoreboard yet. Let's get this out to Ziyech eventually. Oh, it's a good pass out in front as well. He's not got the pace to get there. Oh, somehow we've got the ball though. Please be a corner. Yes, it is. Alrighty, we've got an opportunity here. Let's send the players to the near post. Keep it in the air. Ziyech, whip it in. Oh, it did go to Pulisic, I believe. Let's whip it in again, maybe. Hudson. Oh! Jeez, Kai Havertz did get the decisive header, and it was almost on target, but just passing by the left-hand post by a whisker. Well, there goes the half-time whistle, and it remains nil-nil, just like it started. Alrighty, I don't think Wolfsburg have exactly played... Well, I just don't think we've uh, created enough chances. And uh, even though Kovacic is looking tired, I will leave him on for now. But uh, yeah, let's hope this second half of the first leg is better than the first half. Oh, no way. It's a penalty. Oh, I thought I timed the slide tackle perfectly. Oh, no way have I considered a penalty. This is the worst way to go down. I thought I... Oh, no. He just got the player's leg instead of the ball. Oh, okay. We're in trouble here, guys. Got to stop the dot shot. Edouard Mendy. Got to guess the right way here. I'm going to go bottom right. Oh, I went top right, but Mendy got there anyway. Let's go. Come on. The brick wall steps up when it matters most. Not a great penalty. But we dive the right way and a strong glove pushes it away from the net. Let's go. It's still nil-nil, boys. We're still in the driving seat, ladies and gentlemen. 
right. And Mendy's got it again. Here we go, got some space here in behind. Kai Havis has got there. No, what is that pass? Oh, come on, FIFA, don't do this to me. No way. Oh, I wanted that to be right at the feet of someone in the box, probably Kante. And instead, the game has just absolutely ruined me there. What a wasted opportunity. Oh, now it's going to go down the other end for Wolfsburg. Thankfully, Aspel Aquadera is there to cut it out. Well, the Chelsea fans are certainly playing their part. But can the players respond and get this winner? Good pass to Pulisic. Ziyech back stick. <laughs> no way. Oh my gosh, that was a beautiful cross in. Alrighty, three-way change just happened. I've brought on Barkley, Jorginho, and Reese James to kind of add a new dynamic to this game. Hopefully we can get at least one goal on the board before full time here. That way we're not going into the second leg with a stalemate. Well in, Pulisic. Cross it in. Hudson Adoy. What was that? That was just chaos football that did not work out productively. Barkley from deep. Ah, the deflection lost its power. Come on. I don't want to concede now. Not Definitely not late. Oh, it's a good pass. No way. How is that a penalty? No way. Oh, the referee called that so late. Oh, it was the follow through. Oh, Rudiger. No way. Such a clumsy challenge. And now we're going to have to stop a second penalty. Do we go the right way? Right. Oh, he stops it again! Come on! Let's go! Two penalties, two saves. Let's go! Come on! Oh, what a stop too! Wow, that is huge. That might decide the fate of this quarterfinals, guys. Someone get this clear. Oh, we didn't, but Mendy is there. Wow. That is absolutely crazy, guys. That is incredible by Mendy. Dives the right way both times. And his athleticism is just able to get his hands up and stop the ball from hitting the back of the net. Come on, Barkley. Do your job. Just get that ball out of here. Unfortunately, guys, it does end as it started. 0-0, zero, zero, and that means we go to the second leg, having a job to do. But the headline from this game is that Edward Mendy stepped up and saved two penalties. That's phenomenal, guys. Wow. This could have been a very, very different game if the uh, goals did hit the back of the net. But, wow. I'm struggling to process what just happened, but... Not the best result that we could have got at Stanford Bridge, but it's not terrible. Now we go away from home, needing a result. <laughs> That's back-to-back -back games where Mendy is man of the match, and a perfect 10 out of 10 it is. A frustrating game for you. Can you still make the semis? We can go there and win. The ball wouldn't bounce for us. Not scoring is a letdown. We can go there and win. That's for sure. We looked a well-organized side out there. To be honest, I always felt we'd go and at least get one goal in the away leg. I think we could still get the job done, even though uh, Wolfsburg were relatively solid and didn't allow anything to happen at the back for them. Did you play for the nil-nil today? Well, absolutely not. Of course, we wanted to win. Um, I want to see us attack with more energy. We were really determined out there. We were never at our best today. Hard work is its own reward. Hmm. We were never really at our best today. Defensively, we were, we were pretty good, but never got enough players forward to create chances that could have decided the game. 
I think that is 100% accurate. I'll just link up play up top with ZH, Havertz and Pulisic. Just wasn't there. So unfortunately, we weren't able to get many chances. Was this one of those days for you up against a goalie like Castile's? Let's work to be better. We didn't look like scoring. We need to be clinical. We need to be clinical. I know we didn't have Lukaku or Werner in the side today. And they have been our two most prolific strikers up top. Um, and uh, we definitely miss them, that's for sure. Hey boss, I was really down about not getting picked. I want to do everything I can to help the team in big games. Maybe it would be a good idea to look at my schedule and think about rotating the squad for easier fixtures. Huh. Interesting that he is telling me this. I don't disagree with what he's saying. And uh, I was disappointed not to have been able to pick him because he was so fatigued. Um, get your edge back. I know every player wants to play every game, but it looked to me like you were struggling for match sharpness. You needed a break and I now want you back fighting for your place again. That's the answer I would give in a real life situation and hopefully he can bounce back for this Premier League fixture up against Southampton. Now, the last thing I want to quickly say about the Real Madrid fixture uh, in the Champions League is now that we're going to have to go to the Bernabeu and uh, somehow get a couple goals under our belt and hopefully not concede any. I don't know how we're going to do it, honestly, guys. It's not looking positive, to be honest. But the fact that we did strike back against Southampton with a lot of venom does give me some confidence. But... Honestly, it's going to be really tough. I can't see us not conceding at the Bernabeu, especially with you know Benzema in such good form. Real Madrid are always deadly um, in front of the home crowd, so I think it will be difficult. Our chances don't look promising, but I don't. I'm not going to give up yet, and I do believe that if Thomas Tuchel gets his tactics right and everyone performs outstanding, we might just progress in the Champions League and maybe have another chance at retaining that trophy. Alrighty, we've dealt with the negativity for this episode. Now, let's talk about some positive things and what a performance against Southampton at St. Mary's. In the beautiful Southampton sunshine, we came out with severe determination and with a will to bounce back in the most prolific of fashion. And I'm very impressed by everyone's performance on the field. It was fantastic. And to see Mason Mount score an absolute worldie from outside the box was just chef's kiss. He's such an elite young player. And I'm so looking forward to seeing him develop over the next couple years to becoming better and better. I do genuinely think that if he continues on his upward trajectory of improving... He could possibly be another Frank Lampard-esque type player for us. You know, a player who sits in midfield, is creative, and also scores goals. Obviously, Kai Havertz, he's just in such great form. I think it's, what, five goals in five Premier League consecutive games now. So just amazing. Um, I'm so glad that we've got a player up top who can be consistent in on the score sheet. And speaking of consistent on the score sheet, when the game first started and Werner hit those I had those opportunities that hit the post and the crossbar. I was like, oh no, is it another one of those days for him? But he did eventually get on the score sheet and he did get two goals. So good on him for that. That first goal that he scored was just classic Turbo Timo. That's exactly why we bought a, a player like him to utilize his pace and his, uh, what is going on there? <laughs> to utilize his pace and his intelligence um, to get into those spaces behind the defense and uh, capitalize on those defensive errors. And that's exactly what he did there. Classic Timo uh, Werner. And I was uh, very impressed with his performance overall today. And I have to say, what a beautiful assist it was for that Kai Havertz goal. Timo Werner just perfectly passed it onto the post so it would beautifully rebound to the feet of Kai Havertz. I'm joking, of course, but it was quite funny that in this game, he does hit the post on three different occasions, and it was quite humorous to see him 
hit the post, and it just perfectly rebound to Kai Havertz for that fourth goal. Just it sums up Chelsea's, uh, sorry, Werner's Chelsea career, doesn't it? Just so many great opportunities. And it's just not working out for him on so many occasions. But it's easy to joke at the end of the day when the result is so positive for you. And um, that throw didn't exactly work out how I wanted it to. But hopefully a 6-0 uh, result in-game is on the cards for us. Let's just hope for a really good performance. And now uh, let's see what's possible. Oh, that's a good challenge there. By the Southampton defender. Just got his body in the way of Lukaku. Oh, no way. Mendy, great save. Well in. He's in such great form at the moment, is Mendy. Stopping penalties. Stopping. Oh, come on, Werner, get there. Oh, the keeper just got there. Rossi is in goal today, as opposed to Foster, who was in goal in real life. And uh, I actually think he performed very, very well in goal for Southampton. Uh, I think it's just a reflection of how poor their defense is, the fact that six goals ended up in the back of the net. Let's whip that in. Cross doesn't exactly go anywhere productive. Werner. Oh, what a save. Trying to hit the top right-hand corner there. Not successful. All right, whip it in. Oh, another shot that's blocked. And that corner comes to nothing. Put the ball in for Werner now. Whip it in for Lukaku. Get there. Yes, let's go. 1-0 is the advantage. And it's Lukaku who's in the right place at the right time. A beautiful pass by Mount. Into Werner, who's able to put in the cross to our main at number nine. We're up by a goal already in the early phase of this game. Very, very happy with that. Good goal. Oh, what an opportunity. Unfortunately, Mason Mount is not known for his aerial ability. He does get up well and beat the defender, but... Just over the crossbar. And even if it was on target, I think the keeper would have had it covered. Oh, mistake by Southampton, which allows Werner to get Lukaku in. Oh, my God. On his right foot, he just absolutely skewed it, and he should have buried that. Here we go, another opportunity. Maybe another cross into Lukaku. Oh, Jorginho was on the edge of the box. And the shot is blocked, which means it goes out for a corner. I'm going to send players to the near post again. Get the ball high in the air. Christensen gets there. Oh, but the shot is off target. Oh, beautiful counter-attack here. Werner. Oh, classic T Turbo Timo. Get in for the second goal. Let's go celebrate in front of the Chelsea faithful. Oh, second half is coming up, and we are going to be going into it very comfortably, I feel like. Southampton have not had a sniff, and uh, we haven't been exactly 100% clinical, but that was a very, very good attacking created opportunity for us, and it was our two main men again, Lukaku and Werner, Werner getting on the score sheet. Alrighty, half time here at St. Mary's, and uh, we're sitting comfortably, Oh my gosh. I've said this before and I'll say it again. 2-0 is a dangerous lead. As soon as they get one back, the momentum shifts. They get a glimmer of hope. That goal was created because Chalabar was just out of position. And as someone who's low on sharpness, it doesn't surprise me, but... Oh, that's a selection headache for sure. Oh, great pass to Werner. Come on, bury it. No way does that come off the crossbar. 
To be fair, that was a phenomenal shot, but oh my goodness. Oh no, Kante's lost it. Oh no, counter-attacking opportunity for Southampton. We're defensively in shambles at the moment, so disorganised. And we're in trouble here. Thank goodness that was a terrible shot. Alrighty, just under 10 minutes to go in the second half. And uh, instead of this being a comfortable victory away from home, it's going to be a sweat to the dying moments. Jeez. Uh, on the, right on the goal line, we have a tussle there between the Southampton man and the goalkeeper there, which is not ideal. Let's get this into Pulisic. Oh, good pass. Oh, the dribble was just on the wrong side of the defender. And he's able to clear that up. Come on, win that head up, Pulisic. Oh, Lukaku's pass is cut out. Ah, oh, should just held up the play. Let the defenders come into the back of us. Oh, get the shot away. No, why is that pass? Oh my god, another great save by Mendy. Get that pass up. Werner doesn't win it though. We're going to have to get players back. Jorginho, help out. Oh, shot from deep. Oh, that really was a sweat all the way to the end. Okay, well, we didn't exactly reflect our dominance like we had in real life, but the bottom line is we got the three points. <sighs> yes, I agree with the commentators there. A well-earned victory, even though we did concede and made it difficult for ourselves late on. We were the better side. We had more of the attacking threat, and uh, we were definitely deserving of the win. Even though it wasn't pretty, we got the job done, and that's what matters. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of this episode, episode 23. We obviously now progress into the second leg, and uh, obviously it is still nil-nil, so we have uh, not only a defensive display that we need to be putting up, but also we need to make sure that we're getting some goals on the score sheet so that we can progress into the semi-finals against someone. But who knows who? But that is the end of this episode. I really appreciate you guys coming in, enjoying this content, and uh, showing me your support. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, so until the next one, hopefully we can get over the line against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Fingers crossed, I will be watching live. And uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to hear my thoughts um, as they happen. Um, for that Real Madrid fixture. I'm sure I'll be very emotional, but both either positively or negatively. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Until the next episode, stay safe, stay responsible. Thanks very much for watching.